Good afternoon, Westwood, and welcome to the Wolverine Report, episode 15. Evan Cardamino, Charlotte Lynch, Marie Fiscaldo, and I'm Morgan Donahue. And folks, we are absolutely delighted to have the guests that we have today. Um, I've mentioned Mount Rushmore before. I mentioned it with uh, head coach Mike Welby being a, a Mount Rushmore, uh, you know, someone who I'd consider to be on Mount Rushmore for coaching and playing. Um, the athlete we have today, I would have on Mount Rushmore for playing, and it's a no-brainer. You ask anyone who's seen this person play, uh, has been in uh, the, the, you know, the, the basketball court when she's playing, they would say an absolute no-brainer. Amazing accomplishments. 2001-2002 state champion, part of the 71-game win streak. Amazing. Uh, All-time leading scorer in basketball, counting boys and girls. Uh, 1,500 points, 1,538 points, simply remarkable. She is a Westwood High School Hall of Famer, Sports Hall of Famer. She's also a three-time Ivy League champion at Harvard. Very difficult to do in a very competitive Ivy League. Two-time Harvard Women's Basketball Team MVP. Uh, she was also the captain of uh, her senior year. It's just an amazing accomplishment for anyone in any sport, but to do that at the highest level, uh, absolutely remarkable. And she spent five years as an assistant under the legendary Kathy Delaney Smith, a uh, friend of the network, friend of the program. Uh, and Kathy said, you know, in her 50 years of coaching, um, this person was one of the most special assistant coaches that she's ever had on her squad. And we are absolutely delighted to have her here with us today. Lindsay Miller, also known as Lindsay Hallian, previously, uh, pr prior to getting married. Um, but Lindsay, uh, really excited to have you. And how are you? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. So thank you, guys. I think this is an amazing initiative to connect the Westwood community. So thank you all for doing it, and thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of episodes with the alumni, and I think it's very important um, for a number of different reasons. It is talking about the history of our town. It's talking about how special our town is, you know, and when anyone thinks about our town, I, I hope they think about competitiveness. I hope they think about great leadership. Um, and not only just the winning culture, but doing it the right way. And a lot of times these stories are told here on the podcast with our fantastic alumni. Um, and, you know, one of the questions I wanted to kind of kick off with you is Westwood Girls Basketball is an incredible historic program. It started in the 70s, 80s. It did not slow down in the 90s. It was terrific. And then had another resurgence in the late 90s, you know, early 2000s when you played. Um, when you hear that name, Westwood High School basketball. You know, what, is, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot to me. I think, I think it shaped a lot of who I am as a person. I have so many great memories as a very young girl in the town of Westwood watching like some of my idols and heroes play on that court and um, really taught me a lot about being a competitor, like you said, um, working really hard to be a part of something special and to be a part of something bigger than yourself. I think that so much of my experience at Westwood was about just like honoring this tradition and, yeah. and trying to make the alumni proud and the town proud. And I think that that's pretty unique yeah. to have a town that like really the continuity of that program is really, really special. Yeah. And one commonality that I've seen when we have brought in alumni is that they followed the teams before them. You know, in grade school, you know, they'd go out and watch the team and they would say, I want to be that person. You know, I loved how they did that warm up. You know, that is so exciting. I can't wait to go to Westwood High School and be a part of that. Were there players that you would go see, um, you know, when you were in grade school at Sheehan or, or um, you know, whatever the school was back then um, where you're like, I want to be that person? Is there anyone that stuck out that that come to mind? Yes. And I would say like globally, I wanted to be yes. on that team so bad, right? <laughs> like those girls were so tough and so good and they played with swag and heart. And even in the devastating defeats that I was at some of the games, it was just like, you know, the person in the arena, right? That they yeah. are like, it just, they gave it their all. And it was just so fun to watch. Um, and I remember really young, or not so young, but looking up to C. White. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. a point guard. She's a point guard. And she was like just a star and really fast and ferocious and such a good leader out there. And she would speak at camps and yeah. she would tell me that she, or so, tell the group, you know, I sleep with my basketball. I walk it to school. You have to like live and breathe this. And, you know, you have to 
be purposeful. Like what kind of training do you want to do? What do you want to get out of this? And um, write yourself a workout. And if it's not done when your friends call you to come out, like you can't go with your friends. Like yeah. if it, that work ethic really stuck with me and I did sleep with my ball and dribble yeah. it to school and I learned so much of that from her. And then I remember middle school playing like town basketball, just like red versus green. And the refs were... Andrea Barr and Nikki Delaney, yeah. and they were stars on the high school team. And, you know, I, it was just like for fun. But I would go to those games and be like, I got to be like awesome. I really want to impress them. And they would talk to us. And I just felt that connection and that like mentorship from so many of the players. But um, yeah, I looked up to Andrea. I picked my number after Andrea Barr. She like was 44. Yep. Yeah. She was the first player I saw that um, had like a true jump shot, first woman. Yeah. And, um, I really like wanted to do that too. And I think that ended up being like a kind of unique part of my game that I definitely stole from her. Lots of hard work, but stole yeah. it from her. I mean, when I remember you playing, you were different. Um, you were different. You, the way you saw the game, you had unbelievable unmatched compete level in you, but you also had, you know, things like unbelievable handle. You know, you'd be doing behind the back passes, um, which were risky, but they weren't risky for you because they'd be right in the hands of the intended player and it'd be an easy, you know, two points. Where did you develop all that? Was that done, you know, in the driveway? Was that done, you know, in, you know, during practice? Um, and where did you have that drive to work on things like that where, you know, we're talking about, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. There's a lot of things going on with school and all that. Like, where'd you find the time to even, you know, work on things like that? Yeah, I would say the Westwood culture like put that in my yeah. head and like that compete and then spent a lot of time and like had basketball journals of like drills and moves I wanted to do. And then I think a really developmentally important thing for me is that I was able to play with guys yeah. all growing up and like a lot of your friends and a lot of my friends. And um, I don't know if you remember Andrew Salter, who yes. is like a few yeah. years older than us and him and like some of the football guys would play after school every day. Um, and I was so bad compared to them. Andrew Salter's like six five, he played at kid. Brown, yeah. but he would like let me play one-on-one -on -one and do drills with him. And <laughs> I remember the first time I scored a point and I still lost like yeah. one to 11, but I was like psyched. And I think that, but again, that's a welcoming, a welcoming and like a competitiveness that we can all be great that yeah. I think the Westwood culture has that's actually not common everywhere, right? To yeah. like take a younger player under your wing and want that person to be great just as you're training to be great. I think that's special. How did you get introduced to the game of basketball specifically? And when did you know growing up that that was a sport you wanted to stick with in high school? Good question. Um, I, I remember second grade doing town basketball and I was so shy when I was little and I didn't want to go. And I had already quit like ballet and like my dad, I, my dad, told me, you know, like, we're going to basketball. And I would cry. I didn't want to go. And he was like, you're not going to be a quitter. Like, I don't care if you like it, but you can't quit. And I went and um, I I would like to say I was like a star, but I was one of the kids that could hit the rim. It was like a very high rim. We were very small. And um, that kind of just encouraged me. And I don't, I mean, I just kept working. Honestly, I never thought too far ahead. You know, I felt like I just wanted to be as good as I could be and um, was so lucky to be surrounded by like coaches and teammates and other athletes, other sports that were just kind of on the same mission. So that helped a lot. Yeah. In terms of like the flavor of teams you, you played on growing up now, there's just so many, um, you have town league, you have club, you yeah. know, you have, and some kids are playing multiple clubs, you know, different seasons and whatnot over the summer or, uh, fall. What was kind of that flavor of the teams you played, you know, I'd imagine town league. Um, but was there like CYO, was there also club involved, uh, with, with, uh, some of the early on basketball teams? Um, I played definitely in town. I, sp I played a little CYO. I think that was such a special experience because I got to eventually play with the girls a year older than yeah, me, who yeah. I got to play with throughout high school. I think like seventh and eighth grade, I played with them, which was cool. Um, and I had a really fantastic experience playing AAU, uh, d so different than yeah. the AAU landscape now. I yeah. think there was four Massachusetts teams when I played and it was like, <laughs> you're either like Eastern, Western, North <laughs> yeah. or South, but it wasn't, you know, it was like really good teams and the battles were great and um but a lot of it like is summers you know yeah. i think like your own initiative to be great i think a lot of young players can take that because there's so many camps and clinics and training and trainers and no no shade to any of that but i think 
putting in the time on your own and yeah. like having your own initiative on that stuff is really important. Yeah. Were there other athletes um, outside of Westwood that you looked up to as a kid, you know, um, whether it be professional uh, college level and it doesn't even have to be basketball where there are just certain ones that stuck out where um, you drew motivation from? When I got older, I was into the uh, NBA, but like as a kid, I would say like, Truly, the Westwood High girls basketball yeah. team was everything. Like, I just admired them so much. And I thought that those people were, like, great, great players, but yeah. amazing humans. So yes. many of them. And yeah. I, like, the outreach to the younger players was so awesome. A hundred percent. I mean, when I was talking with, uh, when we had Kathy Delaney on, we were talking about um, how special it was for her team to go down to the middle school and to meet some of these players. And she said they'd do these slideshows. Like they didn't have PowerPoint back then, but they would put like a projector on the on the wall and they'd have pictures of like, you know, the players with the kids. And I was mentioning that's some of the best marketing you can have for these kids to um, not only either join uh, or, you know, start playing if, if, if they haven't already, but to uh, go to Westwood High School and to um, play at Westwood High School. And that... You know, when you look at the 70s and what they did then, like it really it really didn't stop. We're looking at they had a 96 game win streak, which yeah. was remarkable. They had a heartbreaking loss in the state championship in 78. Um, Jackie McMullen senior year, they lost by a point to Drury, I believe. They then win the state championship the following year um, in a double overtime and Deacon, a, a Dartmouth stud, Ivy League stud, um, put them over the top. And it was like one of the, you know, one of the the best wins in Westwood, you know, history. Um, but you look at kind of just the history that they set. And then, you know, that's always been that 800 pound gorilla. I feel like for any, you know, basketball team that's played after that is how do you even match that? You know, how do you even, um, you know, start over? You guys did. You had a 71 game win streak. You had back to back championships. You had an incredible coach too. And coach Riley, were you, were you guys aware of what these ladies did in the seventies and, you know, how much of, you know, understanding that history um, did that motivate you to say, let's let's match that. Let's start our own, um, you know, streak and let's let's start something special here. Oh, good question. I don't think that in the moment when we had our streak, we felt the pressure to match that yeah. streak. But I think, you know, about that yes. greatness, you know, growing up and the expectation and the standard is so high. And in some ways, the pressure is high. But I truly cannot say enough about Riles and our yes. coach and Bill Riley. Like I, I've been a high school coach that is a, and you've been a high school. Yeah. it's a demanding job yeah. and it is so tricky. And I think he walked the line so beautifully between fun and holding us to a standard that would really help us be great. And I, I just think that's so hard to do at the high school level. And, and he was the perfect person for it. So um, what a great leader we had to yeah. go on that streak. Yeah. I mean, I used to go to those games and I'd just be so impressed where I'd, I'd watch you go through um, warm-ups and um, you guys were loose, you know? And I, I'm just thinking to myself, do they know that they, you know, that they've won 50 in a row and like this is a pretty good team they're playing and all this? And of course you did. Um, but like, I think you guys had this special confidence to know that we're gonna come out, we're gonna, we're gonna play, you know, uh, we're, gonna we're gonna be ready at, at you know, uh, you know, when the game's, you know, when the, when the ball's in the air and we're going to do our thing. You guys had like swagger to you. Those warm ups were yes. unbelievable. You, yes. you know, half the like you guys had the and one like tear offs. Half them would be buttoned, half wouldn't. <laughs> you know, people doing behind the back, you know, and, and you know, you had the you had the music blaring, too. Yeah. Um, did you guys was there any pressure about that streak or were you just focused on playing ball? I think it's like truly if it, you were going to do a sports psychology study, like a marvel. Yeah. I don't think we really felt pressure game to game. I think we were just so focused on like yeah. being at our best and being dominant. And that's what it takes really like, yeah. it, you know, not to not get caught up in that type of pressure. Um, and again, like credit to Coach Riley because I he was certainly nervous. Like yeah. if you stood next to him close <laughs> enough before a game, you could hear him like humming to himself because yeah. he's like, we're going to play a game that we could win 90 to 10. And like, I've, that, I've but, seen then, some of those, yeah. but then trying to like, you know, you have a lot of great players. And I think that's the other thing. If you could bottle that culture and mm -hmm. chemistry of those teams, like, wow. Like, yeah. I think you just go, people go searching for situations like that. Like, I, I think my freshman year, maybe all 12 of us could have played at the college level. Like it was a very good team, but it was, so no one really felt like it's on me or yeah. I have to shine. It was like such a collective 
um, way forward. And it was really special that everyone embraced each other and everyone played for each other. And, and that was awesome. Absolutely. I mean, I wrote down some names of uh, the 2002 team because that was my, my freshman year. But mm. studs, Kerry Bergen, uh, Danielle Fitzpatrick, Allie Rose, uh, Paula Sheehan, Kristen Chelman, uh, Jill Regan. Uh, the Chase sisters yeah. were terrific. Uh, Katie Gavin. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, all of them, I think, played or or could have played at Gr the next level. Agree. And, and not just basketball. Yes. You know, <laughs> Kristen Chelman was a two time uh, Tawarden Award winner, which is the Heisman Trophy yes. for women's lacrosse. Um, Paula Sheehan, like three point or three sport stud um, soccer, basketball, lacrosse. And she, you know, could have played probably all three of them if she wanted to. She was uh, unbelievable. I think that was like one of the saddest moments of my yeah. high school experience was losing her because what an amazing leader and person. But truly, as a high school player, she was yeah. the best player I ever saw played with. Like she yeah. was so good and she was so smart and so skilled. And like it was a gift to get to play with her and to get to be her friend. Like it yeah. was, she was just an awesome person. So how often do you keep in touch with uh, your teammates? You know, because they're special memories. These I are know. forever. It's um, hard. It's hard. Um, it, but like um, when when you see them. Um, does basketball come up, you know, and does you know, the win streak come up and, you know, some of these some of these great memories because they come up all the time when I see. Some yes. of my buddies. And I think like being part of Westwood Girls basketball, you're like part of this continuum. And yeah. so like you kind of have this common thread of like passion and yes. toughness and like this swag that you're yes. talking about. And like I have a friend in my town, Pam Barker, who played for Kathy yeah. um, when she coached here. And, and I, I've never played with Pam Barker, but yeah. I know what it would be like to play with her yes. just by yes. like being in her presence. Right. And so I just think that there's this shared experience and this shared like developmental piece that we all have, which is really cool. Yeah, and, she, and Kathy said, I asked her, I said, was Lindsay similar to the, the, like, did she have the similar DNA to like the Nancy Fabianos, the Ann Deacons? And she said, absolutely. So, Amazing. you know, it's in kind of the town, you know, yeah. it, and it definitely, you know, when it, generations can go by and there's just that same mindset of we love sports, we want to compete. Yeah. Um, you know, a question for you, tremendous leaders on those teams. Yeah. Were they just all good leaders going into high school and, you know, it was just great that you know, you had all of these great leaders together or was that, you know, do you think it was developed over time, um, you know, brought together through winning adversity, things yeah. like that? How, how was all of that leadership? Uh, how did that all form together? That's probably a comp more complicated answer yes. than I can. But I think part of it is growing up in the culture. I think part of it is like what you go through as a team. Yeah. And if there are like younger players listening to this, I would say, and this is so rare that like there was no hierarchy on these teams. And like I remember coming in as a freshman and like co going to play for a team that's already historic. Right. And mm. like, yes, some losses to graduation, but lots of stars on the team. Yes. And like you might hear that and be like, wow, that's going to be tough for her to get into. It wasn't tough at all. Yeah. Like the girls on the team, like open arms, welcomed, like everyone was friends. Everyone cared for each other. It was there wasn't like this competition or individuality. It was like truly a team. And like, I'm so grateful. And I think and I remember like Danielle Fitzpatrick, you mentioned she had this van and it was called the VI Fitz. And it was like probably <laughs> fit like 12 people. But like she would just take us all everywhere and we did everything yeah. together. And it was like not like you're a freshman, get the balls. Right. There was none of that. It was like we they were yeah. truly servant leaders. And yeah. I think that that's part of girls basketball culture is like, how can we um, serve the younger generations and serve each other? It's really special. And I don't know, Morgan, if I'm talking too much here, but no, no. Um, if you think about just the culture in our school during those yes. times, yeah, so many great athletes and yeah. so many so much success across sports teams. And I think that that welcoming, like we all can be great attitude, not like, oh, it's only boys hockey that's yeah. great or oh, it's only girls basketball. It was truly like going into school and having like, you know, a junior football player high five you in the hallways yeah, yeah. or like the other people at your games. Yeah. It was just that amplifies it all and amplifies the culture. It, it was. Uh, I, I like to kind of refer to that as like abundance um, where, yes. you know, people in competitive situations think if this person's successful, it takes away from my success. It couldn't be more wrong. Everyone can be successful. 
you know, and it's important, I think, to celebrate together because we are all together. It's not just all the girls on the, the basketball team together. We're, we're one. There's no competition. Our, the only competition we have is us versus them. Um, but the school, too, like we're all yeah. we, we all want to win. You know, when we're yeah. covering games, you know, we, we were checking the golf, uh, the golf scores before you came in. Uh, it's oh. a state championship today and checking in on Westwood oh. and, you know, doing the same when it comes to the soccer games and uh, field hockey and football, you know, because we just love seeing, you know, Westwood win. And we love seeing these kids doing great things on the on the biggest stage, you know, similar to what what yeah. you, you did, you know, and uh it was a pretty cool time. You know, uh, you guys won a state championship, your, uh, the back-to-back on a Saturday. We won it on a, on a Sunday. And it was a really remarkable time. You guys were probably one of our best support systems at the time coming to our games. We would go Same, to your games. Yeah. And um, it was fun. You know, I had that uh, high five clip from, from years back. Awesome. Somehow got the, uh, the VHS to convert to, uh, to digital. <laughs> I swear it's 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 not uh, the the quality isn't because of the time that's lapsed. It's just VHSs weren't the best technology, and we've come a long way. Um, but those those are some fun memories. We went to the uh, the, the state house together too. Oh, yeah. Remember yes, that we I met. I think it was. Um, How cool was that? That yeah. was pretty cool. We hopped on a bus. They brought us to uh, the state house, and we met. It was lieutenant governor at the time because I think Paul Salucci um, had gone to like you know be a part of I think George Bush's um, cabinet. So it was Jane Swift I think we met with, so which cool. is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. But sports do that. Sports opened up um, those yeah, doors. Like, yeah. We think that's kind of like normal, right? Yeah, like, and that's yeah. the standard that people growing up in the town <laughs> yes. are like, you know, like seeing. <laughs> three five. We had three. You know, in, in counting years, so five. Um, you know, fire trucks and police bringing us into town, you know, <laughs> celebrating, oh you know, with the blaring, you know, the, the sirens and whatnot. But what what an amazing time. And, uh, you know, it's funny because when I we had Paul Little on over the summer and I asked Paul, I said, Paul, who are some of the best leaders um, that you've seen come through? He's been here. It's now his 24th year. First person he said it was Lindsay Hallian. And <laughs> He was talking about this notebook that you had, and Kathy mentioned a notebook too. So you're sounds like you're a big note, notebook person, but you had motivational quotes oh, or something in there. Yeah, if we got a notebook. Right here. <laughs> um, but he's talking about how you had like motivational quotes um, that would fire you up. You know, tell yeah. us a little bit about this special uh, notebook, and uh, do you still have uh, any of the high school or college notebooks that you had? I probably do. You know, save them for my kids, but um, I just like got obsessed with basketball yeah. in like all the ways like not ever looked at it in terms of like it's just skills or it's just um the output on the court so it was also like ways to think about the game and ways to be motivated and ways to train and um players i looked up to and clips yeah. from their like magazines i guess back then yeah, but yeah yeah so in high school you mentioned you played soccer for a little bit um but then kind of went all in and just basketball only um you've been a coach as well um, you've seen the benefits of like, you know, uh, Paula Sheehan and uh, Kristen Chelman of playing multiple sports, yeah. you know, and, and having that competitive fire. Um, but you also have the use case of when you play one sport, like being all in on it and the benefits of that, like with the development and skill set. Um, as a coach, do you, do you like seeing players play in multiple sports um, or, you know, uh, you know, is it do you, do you want the kid to be most comfortable with what they do? You know, it's kind of curious because each coach has a different perspective on this. Yeah, I think. I, I think the later you can specialize, the better, in my yeah. opinion. But um, and I think the research is actually backing that up with yeah. overuse injuries. So yeah. um, and and I can appreciate it. Like I was one of these people who just was like felt so much stronger about one of the sports. But yeah. there's so much value to being in a different role, to being a different type of player on a team, and to like getting that cross training and just yeah. being on multiple teams. So I, th I think if you can do it because once you get to college you can't do it right if no, you want to play yeah. at that level so or yeah. a few people can but yeah i would say do it if you can so we mentioned a couple of those play you know a bunch of those players that you played with did i miss anyone you know who are who are the players that you played with that were special to you that that you that you want to give a shout out no all of them oh, <laughs> i yeah. mean yeah. i think it's like truly i see myself as part of a continuum of um westwood basketball yeah. and like you know and i would say we talked a lot about the older players on those teams you know that won the state championship but like it was also a remarkable experience to for that whole group that was super amazing and talented to when they left to have to kind of like be a scrappier different yes. version of yeah. that and play with a lot of people that their primary sport was lacrosse or yes. soccer and you know i will talk about meredith frank who like yeah, she was, she was like player. one of the best 
college lacrosse pro players yeah. probably of all time as yeah. well. And I remember being in a game with her and it like it was like a one a last minute play or an important play and she was supposed to set a screen for me. Yeah. And again, she's like a D1 lacrosse player, and she grabs me after the huddle. She's like, run her off me hard. And I'm like, you are a beast. <laughs> that's, like, that's just narrative. disregard yeah. the, yeah. you know. And so just so many people um, that, you know, I got to play with, I think that made me a better person, a better player. Yeah. So special. She, uh, poor thing, she's had, she's, I think she tore both her uh, ACLs, like in college. She tore an Achilles um, coaching a game on the sideline, finished the game coaching, like, on her knees. So that's the like the competitiveness in Westwood, but you yes. know, in a player like like Meredith, there were some great players too. Uh, you know, my my class in addition, uh, Moore Mahoney, Jackie yeah. Chris, uh, Lauren Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Um, you know, and like Jill Greenberg, I think was a couple of years behind. She ended up being a thousand point scorer. And I didn't uh, play with Jill, but yeah. like Jackie and Moore yeah. and Lauren and yeah. I, Meredith was in that grade. Yeah. And we played. I had Deanna Chris, Salter. Deanna and, yeah. Salter yeah. played with us and. Um, Kristen Daly, who was yes. my year, yes. who really had a really important role our senior she year did, when yeah. we actually went to the garden like totally yep. unexpectedly. She yep. was our, our only person that was like over 5'8", so that was really <laughs> important to have. <laughs> so um, kind of the last question I want to ask, you know, in terms of Westwood, but it also kind of um, precursors Harvard as well. Um, you had two legendary coaches. You had mm -hmm. Coach Ryland, you had Coach Laney Smith. What were some of the similarities that they had and, and what were, you know, some of those those differences, uh, if any? I think I was so fortunate to play for two coaches that were really positively oriented. Like yeah. I think both of those coaches really believe in their players. They're like take their show leadership through their own, like they'll be personally accountable as a coach. And they and I, I think Riles, I'll never forget when he mentioned Harvard to me. Like I don't like talking about playing for coaches that believe in you more than you believe in you. I was just so like, I want to win the state championship. And he's like, hey, like ever think about Harvard? And I'm like, That's you think cool. I could do that? Like, yeah. um, And so just seeing the big picture, I think both of them were great at that. Um, certainly different in some ways, but I think the success speaks for themselves. And they were similar in that they could really get the best out of their players and, and walk that line of, you know, as a coach, you want to be able to challenge them and challenge them, but also love them. And I think that they both did that in such a great way. Yeah. What was the um, recruitment process for you like going into college and what were some of the things that Harvard and coach Kathy Delaney Smith did that won you over and ultimately had you land on Harvard? Um, Kathy is just like, again, a Westwood legend, but she's like a national legend in, in our sport of women's basketball. And I think she is, you met her and she's just like true as they come. And mm -hmm. I think I never had any questions that she was going to leave Harvard. Um, and I really just trusted in her and believed in her. And I think the Westwood connection actually helped there. I think C. White um, was one of the assistants who started the recruitment process. Um, Your dad said he knew her before uh, you you had like started the recruitment process. They had similar circles from teaching. Um, oh, he was mentioning, yeah. Um, but she, Kathy said that it was. She was worried that, you know, uh, there was, she said there was a, the University of Hartford coach was like a really f trendy coach. Jen Rosati. Jen she's Rosati. Like one of the best point guards like, ever. She played like, at UConn. She goes, Jen's adorable. She played at UConn. She's trendy. And she's like, there's no way, you know, and, and then Kathy's like, I'm just me. I'm myself, you know. <laughs> um, and she, Kathy said she thought you were super special um, in the recruitment process, but even more special when, um, you know, you came and played for her. You know, which co most coaches, I don't think, say that, you know, mm -hmm. um, th just the fact that, you know, when you spend more time with someone, you know, s sometimes you see more of the flaws or or, you know, it's just uh, it, you don't you see things differently because you see them more versus when you see them a few times, you see all their best. It's like highlights, yeah. you know, she said you were more special, um, you know, from from that time. But it was funny because she she didn't think that she had a fighting chance um, going <laughs> up against, uh, you know, the hip the hip coach down at University of Hartford. <laughs> <laughs> but uh so you know what were some of those things besides kathy what what were um you know uh some of the things that sold you on harvard obviously great education yeah close by not too far from home um it's a true student athlete you know yeah. and um you know what, what were some of those additional things that you know were uh big selling points of saying yeah. saying yeah i you know my 17 year old self like i probably could have used more guidance from my perspective now <laughs> but i was really all about basketball and i think that's why i was in that position like i wanted to continue this like amazing experience i had with basketball i wanted to win i wanted to play at the highest level um 
And I thought like Harvard was doing that. Yeah. And they I would go to their games and they had great players and they had, seemed to have great chemistry and they did. Um, and the opportunity for, to play for Kathy and still be, you know, close to my family and my yeah. friends was so cool. So yeah. I was so lucky. Yeah. And did you freshman year, did you take Terry Gracie? I did. Yep. Oh, so that's a tough start. Um, she mentioned though, when you tore your ACL, you were still basically at every practice. Mm -hmm. And she mentioned you had like a notebook, like uh -huh, Paul. The notebook. <laughs> and she said you'd be walking around and you'd be asking players, where do they like their passes? You know, how do they, do they like lob passes? Do they like it, you know, outside versus inside? Yeah. Um, she also mentioned you, you bought some gardening gloves. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you saw something on YouTube that says it helps with touch. You know, she loved this stuff because yes. it was like she is getting ahead. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like Kobe when he broke his arm. He was in the gym shooting lefty yeah um what a know, sight like what it, <laughs> being on the sideline dribbling and gardening gloves i'm sure <laughs> like, what? but she yeah she absolutely loved it like where uh was is that just part of the obsession is like hey i'm out but i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna get reps in you yeah. know any way i can you didn't look for an edge i think yeah. you know i i've been lucky to have some cool accomplishments but i'm just like Five seven or yeah. five eight, like pretty average in a lot of things. So to anything I could do skill wise or motivation wise or like getting to know my teammates. Yeah. And I think it can be humbling. And, and I say this again for younger players. I think Harvard would like kind of wanted me and then like heard through like my community that I was a good community person, yeah. which like take that for what it's worth. Like that gets you over the edge that you're like have that reputation in certain circles. So but again, that's part of being in a community that supports you that you can then yeah. support them. So that's a devastating injury. Um, what kind of advice can you give for the student athletes that go through something like that? You know, mm -hmm. the mind frame, you know, does it get better? Obviously it did. You know, you win three Ivy League champions uh, ships. You won two team MVPs, you know, and three bids to the NCAA tournament. But kids sometimes don't see the forest or the trees like when that happens. You know, what kind of advice would you give to them to let them know, you know, it, it is going to be OK when an ACL is torn or, you know, uh, Achilles. Yeah, you know, things like it that. is so devastating. And it's and I think I work with a lot of athletes in this position now in my work. And it's a, such a long road that you almost have to, like, chunk it up yes, mentally yeah. and not say, like, I'm doing nothing for nine months and then I'm playing because yeah. it's like the little wins, I think, really matter and for everything in life, like yeah. noting the good, noting the little wins. And and I said this to myself when I was going through it, because it is like you finally can run again and like you jog for one or two minutes. And it's just like feels like nothing compared to the level that yeah. you're used to. And I think you truly have to just embrace being a beginner, embrace like truly stinking at everything yeah, again yeah. And before you can be great at it again. And just that can be hard mentally. But just to like see the progress and notice that yeah. um, can help you through. Um, kind of a deep question. So your dad mentioned as a kid, like, you know, you're scared of failure, which we all are as kids. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Jesus. But I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reel it into college, where it sounds like your mindset, you know, changed around failure. Where failure was a good thing. Failure means you're learning, and you're turning these things into wins that will ultimately um, make you a better player and mm -hmm. make you more resilient and make you, you know, just great leadership. Mm -hmm. um, did you, when you got to college and you went through this adversity, did your relationship with failure change because of um, you know, just finding way, you know, not being afraid to, to try things and, and be bad at them, knowing that mm -hmm. the more you do them, you'll become better. Like, so you're asking if the injury impacted yes, that change? Yes. Yes. I would say like that, that, I think these injuries are super yeah. traumatic and they take away so much of what really matters to you. And, um, so I think that you have to reorient yourself to like your expectation has to change and it, it can still be as yeah. big as it was, but, um, I also think Kathy, my college yeah. coach, you know, she used to tell us perfect is boring yeah. and like I want mistakes. I love mistakes yes. and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think that free, not that I didn't feel that in high school, but in high school it was like we should win every game. Yeah. And so that's a little different than when you get to college. And yeah, that's her, impossible. Her act as if uh, mentality, mm -hmm. you know, of act as if, um, you know, you want to become this player. Act as if, yeah. you know, your goal is to become Ivy League champions. Well, then show up to practice and act as if you're an Ivy League champion. And what are those steps that an Ivy League champion would be doing on a daily yes. basis of practice? So good. Isn't you know? that so good? Yeah. Um, and I can't wait for her book to come out because there's going to be a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of great things that, that uh, you know, I think anyone can take in the, in the game of life. It, you know, this, it's so true. It's going to be an awesome, awesome book. I'm looking forward to it too. And how many parallels would you say in sports – in life where it meshes over, where adversity of tearing your ACL. There's mm -hmm. gonna be ups and downs in life, um, yeah. you know, wins and losses. There's gonna be sudden changes, turnovers and stuff like that. 
stuff we deal on a daily basis. How much has basketball itself and what you've been through prepared you for life, you know, and being, you know, a parent, a, a wife and and, yeah. and and all these great things? I think so much. And I think the again, the opportunity to learn those lessons alongside like some amazing people just yeah. makes it feel like better and more transferable, not just like a transactional moment in time with like winning or losing a game, but more like deeply ingrained. Um, and I think in my personal work, I started out um, being like a sports psychology practitioner. Yeah. And I have like widened that to now I'm a general therapist because yeah. I think for two reasons, I don't think that you can like isolate an athlete. I think it's a disservice to them to be like, you're just an athlete and you're yeah. just dealing with your sport. Yeah. Um, and then I also think like it's so similar if you wanna be great at hockey that you also wanna be great at your job and like deal with the ups and downs of parenthood and deal with like being showing up at your best in different relationships. Yes. I think that like, it's all it all goes together and these lessons are, are so transferable. I love that you do that because kids have therapists and whatnot. They don't really have like a sports psychologist, but even there's a gap in between that. There's a gap in between the sports psychologist and the therapist where yeah. there's trauma in sports, um, you know, whether it's injuries, but there's also trauma of like, you know, Royce uh, White. Remember him, basketball player in the NBA? He had like extreme anxiety and he couldn't travel um, for a lot of games because it was just his anxiety would get to levels that were just unmanageable. Mm -hmm. um, but that all started from he saw one of his like uh, teammates collapse on the court and that he just couldn't get that um, mm -hmm. visual out of his head. Yeah. So to be able to have someone that understands kind of the, you know, identify trauma, uh, also to be able to uh, understand sports, how these things mix, you know, you, you could have someone that missed a game winning shot and they're traumatized that for 10 years um, and they can't get it out of, and it completely affects their game, you know, and what kind of person can specialize that understands those thinking patterns, um, you know, and, and how to correct them, um, exposure therapy, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to sports of like maybe, you know, when someone goes to a gym, it, it makes them sick because, you know, or things they see and, and how to identify that and then to be able to work at that. It's mm -hmm. it's remarkable, you know, as with your current you know role today, you know, what are some of those things that you're working with, you know, with the kids um, and, you know, how important is it, you know, especially at this age after like COVID where mental health is really, you know, yeah. reached a, a boiling point. Is it to uh, to really have this hands on approach with with our, our student athletes? Yeah, I mean, it's a, I think it's a huge privilege to even be in that spot to work with athletes in that capacity and humans in that capacity. Yeah. But I think. Um, you know, with specifically young athletes, it's like injuries, it's managing pressure. Yeah. And, and and it's the other side of the coin where like, what it, what's going well and what yes. are my strengths and how can I embody those strengths moving, moving forward? So when times are hard, I have this resilience and I have this kind of plan and know who I am and have that trust in myself. Um, and even on the other side of sport, you know, like what were the qualities that made you so great that really like, made that time in your life so special and how can we seek out those qualities and, yeah. and make that part of your life today now that you're not competing yeah it was an interesting concept i learned like years back of a thing called flow state yeah and um it makes me think of like ray allen like when yeah. he would go do his warm-ups he'd be there two hours before and he would just do muscle memory he you know you could probably ask him a question he probably wouldn't answer because he was so much in the zone of like his free throws and his routine and I've just seen when you see these athletes at, you know, those levels, their mental like um, approach and their focus is unmatched. And to be able to kind of tap into that and learn that, um, you know, there really is not many coaches at the younger levels that that, that teach you that. It's, it's some kids have it, some kids don't. I think it's a skill set that kids can learn over time. Um, but how important is, you know, that part of, of um, the process of what you do is performance and teaching them, you know, uh, how to tap into, you know, uh, being dialed in in the most important moments, things like that. Yeah, I think it's like a growth mindset. It's all concentration is a muscle, right? And the distractions are only more and more from when yeah. they play. Like there's yeah. so many distractions, but like if you can keep your concentration where you choose it to be, then you're going to be able to be more in the moment. And, I, you know, I always say the only moment that we have is the one we're in right now. Yeah. And we spend so much time worrying about the future or lamenting about the past and what we can do differently. But like it is a skill of just be present and keep your attention on what you're doing in that moment. Yeah. You're gifted. You had this like well in advance, you know, uh, I feel, you know, just the skill set of knowing how to deal with big games and stuff like that. What were some of your routines, um, you know, that dated back to high school or even college? Like say games, game starts at 
tonight at seven? You know, what, when does, when do you start dialing in? You know, what do you eat? You know, what are, what are Oh my gosh, how things? honest should I be about my routine? <laughs> tell us, tell us, uh, tell us um, as, as much, whatever you're comfortable with. I, I feel like I would have like routines around music and like yeah. you talked about flow state, but yeah. like trying to progress your emotional regulation yes. to like that moment that it's perfect when you get to the game, but it's not like too much too soon and it's yes. not too low when you get there. And so like doing a lot with music and doing a lot with um, like reading my notebook with yeah. quotes and imagery. Yeah. I think early on I started doing like just like a body scan and um, imagery related to like yeah. getting your muscles ready yeah. and getting in the zone in that way. Um, I really loved Michael Jordan and Allen Iverson. Weird yeah. combo, I know, yeah. but I if I had time, I had yeah. these little like movies about them that I would watch. And so you get like a little meditation going with the body scan. I used to do that on uh, the, the Headspace app. Oh, nice. You start at the top, you know, you work your way down. It actually does help, you know, with being more present. Yeah. Um, that's that's awesome. I mean, you, what advice could you give to these kids? Because um, when I would coach, you have everyone's different. You know, mm -hmm. you hop on the bus. Some kids are quiet you know, on a 40 minute uh, bus ride, some kids are, are chatting the whole time. And then you go in the locker room and some kids are having a laugh, you know, five, 10 minutes before puck drop. And yeah. I don't know what to say. You know, I'm just saying, guys, we have a game here. Yeah. I mean, this is business. Um, you know, what recommendation would you give if you're trying to get into that flow state? When does that start? Is that hours before, you know, you can't really, if, you, if you're laughing five minutes before a game, you're probably, uh, you're not in the right, the right mind right. frame. I mean, you can't control flow state truly, but yeah. like, I think I would advise, I would say to people like, who do you want to be? How do you want to show up, show up? Like when the puck, puck drops, like if I'm watching you, like what will I see? And like, what would make you proud? Yeah. And then go backwards from that, right? Yeah. And so like, don't just react and be like, I hope I have it today. Yeah. Like if you want to be intense, if you want to be a great teammate, if you want to be like the scrappiest guy on the ice, like you got to put that in your head and you got to be yeah. thinking about doing that. Like it just doesn't, turn yeah. on Can't when it flip, happens flip a switch yeah. so you almost it's like before the season you have to tell yourself what do i want to be you know what are the, what are the goals that i want to be on this team obviously we have our team goals we want to win the tvl we want to qualify for the state tournament we want to win a state championship but you know i think that's an important thing it's a brilliant thing you you mentioned is a lot of times people aren't putting this on paper yeah or or, <laughs> or who do you want to be because so much of like what we want is out of our control. Like yes. how many years did Westwood Girls Basketball want to win the state championship and just unlucky, right? Like yeah. bad situations, yeah. but like they still, I think, showed up in a way that made the com community extremely proud, that yeah. could make themselves proud. And like that heart on your sleeve or, you know, we know in sports that challenging moments will arise, yes. right? Like that's just part of sport. You're signing up for something that's going to be hard that people are trying to make you fail at. Yep. So how will you plan to handle it? It's not yeah. just like, oh, if I shoot, I hope I don't shoot an air ball because then like what if yeah. like don't wait till you shoot the air ball to like think how you're going to react to it just yeah. know how you respond and yeah. like when i shoot that air ball i high five two teammates and i run back and i clap my hands and i'm like in the zone right ben hogan used to say um before he teed off golf he said i'm gonna have seven bad shots today <laughs> he used to say that every time and the reason why he did was because when he hit those bad shots he was ready yeah. he was ready for him the mindset was there and he moved on and he you know didn't think another second about yeah. it so it's just so interesting about um, getting into the psyche, the winning culture psyche, you yeah. know, and if you can be able to uh, ask questions to someone who's one of the best at it, you know, it's uh, these are great, great uh, experiences for our young student athletes. I would also say like, and I think this is harder and harder, even than when we played is like, just notice the good. I think the yes. pressure is so high and people have these like very high expectations of stats or wins and like they really lose sight of like of the journey that they can be really appreciating. And I think, again, I, I said this with injuries, but it builds resilience. Like if you end a practice and you're like, what are the things that went well for me today? Yeah. And notice those, yeah. then that makes you, that like builds your toolbox of resilience and strength that can help you show up in those big moments. Which leads to confidence. Yes. And in high school, it's like probably the most important time of your life of developing that self-confidence, you know, yeah. to make a big decision of where you're going to college yeah. and things like that. And I think you hit the nail on the head where we could do, t we could do uh, nine things great and one thing wrong. And we're going to focus on that one thing. 100%. Yeah. You know? So um, I always like to say, too, the advice you give other people, give to yourself. Yeah. We don't listen to the advice we give to other people because we're harder on ourselves for whatever reason. Yes. And I call it self-compassion. I'll yeah. say, like, if your friend was struggling, what would you say to them? Yeah. They'll say some beautiful thing. And I'm like, why can't you say that yeah. to yourself? Well, no, I could never say that to myself. But yeah. it's so true. Well, uh, it's it's these, this is really really cool because I think this is stuff that's not taught to these kids and awareness is key. I think once yeah. you're aware of like, oh, okay, that makes sense. 
then you can start to be able to you know implement things implement different um you know catching yourself when you do th- think of something negative and then you know maybe come up with something positive to counteract mm-hmm. it you know things like that but sports and life so similar you know it's mm-hmm. uh if, if i just found I've, I've found that people that have been at the highest of levels of sports typically are pretty successful in their their professional life too you know, it's because a lot of those those attributes and, and whatnot. Um, but do you want to get back to, to Harvard? Yes, <laughs> we could talk about this all day. No, yeah, exactly. So three, um, three Ivy League championships and automatic bids for the NCAA tournament. How special was that to be um, amongst the top 64 teams and to be in March Madness? I mean, that's it was awesome. awesome. It was awesome, <laughs> yeah. And I think we played, my first time in March Madness, we played Maryland. They were the defending national champions. Um, and kind of stuck with them for the first half. But it was just like, you know, it's so cool. It's a different world um, to get yeah. to that part of uh, the tournament. So, And it's a very competitive uh you know, the Ivy League is very competitive. Dartmouth has been historically, you know, a mm-hmm. tremendous basketball program. Brown, you know, as well. And then, you you know, tough road games against like a Cornell, you know, uh, in, in Princeton. Um, you know, it's to do to, to win three of them. Uh, that's an amazing accomplishment. How special were were those the wins, you know, the players doing it with Kathy? Like, you know, are those a lot of memories that pop up that are just, you know, some of the, some of your favorite basketball memories of your career? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It was a dream for me to play for Kathy and yeah. to play Division One basketball. I really did not know that I would be able to do that. And I just had so many, again, like teammates that like welcomed me and that I like so looked up to and taught me how to be that person for other people. And, yeah. and so I, I really think, again, sport helped helped so much with my life. So. Yeah. And Harvard's unique. I, 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 when we were talking to Kathy, we were talking about it's the true student athlete. You guys can't miss a certain amount of classes. There was yeah. some she was mentioning you can't miss like uh, three or four. I forget what it was. And then you're on the road and you have a, a vigorous um, class schedule with d- very difficult classes. And, you know, no one's getting paid. No one's getting scholarships. <laughs> no NLI. You know, how special is that? Like, because that's the that's the true form of student athlete, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that's really hard. And again, that takes like leadership and people on the team that know how to do that and that can like show you when to relax and yeah. not like be crazy about everything and yeah. also show you like, all right, you can't just like watch TV all day, like you need to do <laughs> stuff like, so I mean, it's it's all mentorship and it's all the culture Kathy created and, and the support that was there. And ultimately you got a phone call from Kathy and she gave you a proposition of, you know, joining her staff. Yeah. Um, walk us through that process. Was that Was that an easy decision to make? You know, because it's, you know, you're joining you know, as assistant coach, probably not making the same money as, you, as you're making from, you know, work you're doing previously in the professional life and whatnot, but it's bringing back a passion. It's bringing back, you know, someone special you got to work with. You know, what was that process like when she called you and ultimately making the decision to, to come and coach and join her staff? Yeah, I, that was amazing for me. It was not a hard decision for me. I yeah. like it, Kathy, I think, is one of the most impactful people in my life, for sure. And to have the opportunity to support her at that stage of her career yeah. and, and be a part of Harvard Women's Basketball again was uh, a dream come true for me. Yeah, She battled cancer at one point. Were you a player or a coach at that time or was that? Uh, but she didn't miss a practice, you know. <laughs> And uh, that's so like tough. a standard, I feel like when you don't miss a practice and you set that standard of, you know, you're going through chemo and all this and she would have dizzy spells, you know, nausea and she still, you know, she yeah. said she'd be forgetful and whatnot. She still didn't miss time. You know, what an example you're setting, know. you know, total <laughs> legend. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just think that sticks out because it's like, OK, you could be tired in the fourth quarter, but you know what? That's nothing in comparison to what she's going through. Yeah, well, and Kathy taught us like not to be perfect, but to be tough as nails. Yes. Right. And yeah. like so I remember I had like the stomach bug. I was in like health services getting IVs and we had to leave for Dartmouth like the next morning. And she's like, all right, like we'll see you there. And I'm like, yeah. OK, I'll be there. Like it wasn't yeah. even a question because yeah. like who could look at Kathy after all she's done and fought through and be like, oh, yeah. I'm tired. or something. And you were obviously one of her favorite uh, assistant coach in her 50 years that, you know, she mentioned you were the recruiting coordinator as well. Yeah. What's that process like? Very, you know, uh, competitive process. You know, you're going up against top, um, you know, schools in the country. Yeah. Um, walk us through, like, what were some of the roles, responsibilities you had with that? You know, I'd imagine you're probably on the road a lot, you know, meeting with players. Yeah. yeah. And it's a lot of relationship building is yeah. how we did it at Harvard and getting to know players and their families all over the country and the world. And, 
yes, having battles that are like, oh, it's Harvard or Stanford or Harvard or yeah. UConn or Notre Dame. And it's like Harvard can hang in there yeah. because of it's being Harvard, but yeah. it's totally a different type of communication. But, um, you know, it it's picking out kids at AAU tournaments or from their high schools or from their game film and then starting a relationship and a network with all their yeah. people, their coaches yeah. and their families. Um, and then, you know, just having that relationship get you to the finish line or not and wishing them well, I think is is just part of the part of how that job goes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a very difficult job, but um, you meet some amazing, you know, people yeah. on the road, some some players, even when the ones that don't go to Harvard, you know, I'm sure there's relationships that are there because, you know, you're in the house with their family. You're talking about the values that that Harvard has, you know, yeah. and did, going through that process, did it kind of bring you back to when you were in that process and, and um, you know, um, what it was like to to really find out what's important to these athletes and to see if it is a good good mix. Yeah, because there's so much that yeah. these, like everyone decides on when they pick a school and there's so much to get caught up in that's actually not what's gonna make you happy when you're at a school. Yeah. Like we would always be like, the the name of the conference is actually not gonna make you happy when you get to the school, but <laughs> yeah. like yeah. the kids on the team will and the coaches will. And so, um, yeah, I think it's good to be relatable. I think it's, I mean, it's a cool position now. A lot of the kids that I like, recruited are now playing in the yeah. WNBA. I was telling yeah. my daughter, I'm like, I talked to Sabrina Unescu yeah. on the yeah. phone. Like, yeah. that's so cool. But um, yeah, I think it's it's a great um, lesson in humanity and like yeah. what people look for and what yeah. people will fit for them and just honoring that, whether it's your your school that you're offering or not. And it's 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 a difficult job too because, you know, sometimes you gotta tell a student athlete, you know, we might we're not we might not be the best fit. Yeah. You know, um, and that's that's a great thing to, you know, being honest and mm -hmm. knowing you know, doing what's best for the kid and also what's best for, for the program and whatnot. But I, I thought that was a really cool process because that's an important role. And she, you know, uh, entrusted in, in her girl. <laughs> yeah. um, but tell us a little bit more about kind of what you're up to today. So I know you're obviously, um, you know, dealing with um, – that the hands-on sports performance and um, you know social work, um, you know mental health uh, with with kids and whatnot. Do you still have uh, Lindsay Helen and uh, Hoops Academy as well? A little bit, a yeah. little bit. I um, had I, I loved coaching basketball, and honestly, to leave coaching at Harvard yeah. was very very hard for me because yeah. Kathy means so much to me, and I love that job. And so I wanted, I knew I wanted to keep coaching basketball, but yeah. in a different capacity. So I started doing camps and clinics, and then COVID hit. Uh, but now I have young children, so yeah. I've done a little bit of like second grade yeah, basketball. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, as you know, like coaching is a gift um, for all of us that were in our sports yeah. to be able to give back and be a part of that. How special is it being a mom and, you know, seeing your kids grow up and, um, you know, being there on the sidelines, cheering them on and, you know, and just being a part of that process. It's a really special time in everyone's life. I know it is. And it's also hard. I like yeah. shout out to all the parents that like have to walk this line of like, you know, it means a lot to the kids or it doesn't mean a lot to kids. And you just want to be yeah. supportive either way. Yeah. I think that there's a lot like when we talk about sport and all the complexities of it, like parenting of athletes is very complex. Very and, and yeah. Yeah, I give you credit. And, you know, shout out to uh, to Shelly and Paul, <laughs> legends. Um, how awesome were they, you know, throughout everything, um, you know, before you got to high school playing basketball? playing basketball in high school and then in college, the support system that they had, they were there for the wins, the losses, yeah. the ups, the downs, the torn ACLs. Yeah. Um, how special are they uh, as parents to, to be your rock, you know, in uh, yeah. the up and up and downs of basketball? Totally. I mean, I owe so much to my parents and I think that they have impacted me and like kept me grounded on, you know, what's important, who you want to be on and off the court. Yeah. And my dad like was a lifelong football coach and your football coach. Yeah. And I think he, was just so tough like and the stories about him are just crazy like he's just like a, such a motivator and like really just blue collar kind yeah. of guy that was always there and he coached my AAU team and yeah. I think it was just like a, a little bit of a different flavor like he's just like tough and um supportive and and my mom too my mom like didn't really know basketball yeah. like I remember being at Harvard and we we lost a game and she thought three pointers were so cool because I could never shoot them one of my teammates <laughs> had made four threes and she yeah. ran up to her after the game she's like the threes were going in baby and we're like mom we lost Just making it rain <laughs> yeah um but yeah I can't say enough like my parents were amazing and are amazing so yeah. I'm grateful your, for them your dad a special person in my life you know he was very big in my development uh he believed in me when when I didn't believe in me um, Mr. Mao, almost every time I see him, he brings up uh, the 
this picture he took. It was from the 2004 Super Bowl. I just gave up a touchdown, and your dad is chewing me out, and rightfully so. Um, but, you know, it was the right thing to say at the time. Next series, get an interception. We bring it all the way down to the, you know, the inside the five-yard line. We score and tie the game. Um, but we had that relationship. He could be tough uh, with us because, you know, we were like children, you know, to him. Um, but he had a lot of, like, Kathy in him where he was – uh, unapologetically himself yeah. he really believes in toughness it's football's a tough game basketball's a tough game yeah. um you know and it requires you got to be the hardest workers you know if you're expected to be a leader on that team you got to be the one that's working the hardest to show you know it all drips down um but so many fantastic memories with your dad and winning won yeah. two super bowls together uh with him what was it like you know being at the high school and having, you know, uh, a dad as a coach, you know, uh, did you feel like the daughter and remembering the Titans, you know, being at the <laughs> games and you know everyone, you know, what was that process like? You know, I started going to football games when I was like a tiny baby because he yeah. coached at Waltham, Waltham before. Yeah. And so I, that was normal to me. I think I was like so nervous when he started yeah. coaching. I was like, don't yell at my friends. <laughs> like, but he was yeah. gonna and he, he would like have this funny quote. He's like, I want nice guys dating my daughters. Yeah. I don't want them on my football team. <laughs> you probably might want to cut that out. I don't know. But um, no, he did. He used to. He wanted animals out there. Good animal. You know where you could be like Clark Kent. You're an animal on the football field, and then you come off, and you're you know you know your shirt and tie, you know buttoned up, uh, you know ready ready yeah. to go. But tough tough guy. Survived polio. Yes. Oh my gosh. Imagine. What a what a nugget of information <laughs> yeah. to drop, Morgan. Yes. I would say like between him. Coach Riley and Kathy, like three coaches in my life, three hugely important people that yeah. like believed in me, but also put relationships first. And I think yeah. Westwood is nothing without the relationships that we all have with yeah. each other, with our teammates, with our community. And I think just to see that embodied in like the three, three really impactful people yeah. and how they treated their coaching and like brought love to their players yeah. and brought like hard, like chew you out kind of energy, yes. but also yeah. like really supported and cared, I think was so transformative for me as a person. Yeah. If you don't get chewed out by a coach, um, you know, that means they, uh, that they, they don't really see you as a player that can, you know, there might mean a bunch of things, but being chewed out is a good thing. Let's just put it that way. Being chewed out by a coach means that they respect you enough to be honest with you and to show that emotion that they think that you, there's a higher ceiling. Yeah. And there is. So, you know, there's a, there's a positive with that. And, uh, you know, that was, that was awesome. Um, you know, uh, but in terms of, you know, Westwood, you know, what, what were some of your, your, your favorite memories that you still, uh, you know, obviously state championships and whatnot, but like, you know, some of the, some of the other things, you know, um, the old, the old high school, you know, oh. having teachers like Mr. Mao, you know, um, you get a great group of friends who call it, what it the shows, yep, the, the shows. shows, you know, uh, what are, what are some things when you look back, you know, uh, 2000, 2003 2004 that are you know some of your favorite memories that you still you know think about today the old high school and just how we used to all like run around that place and <laughs> yeah. like it was just so fun and yeah. the teachers like particularly someone like Mao and yeah. other people that had that same blend of like yes. it can be tough but they're also like there for you and kind yeah. um the gym, I actually have a napkin holder from the old floor. Really? My dad made it. I don't know. They, like, gave him a little piece of the floor, and he, like, broke it. And it's, like, this very, like, not nice-looking napkin holder, but it's uh, for the Westwood Eye floor. So, um, And I think, like, excited, not just – I don't even think, like, the winning was the best part. I think, like, the community coming together. Like, I have all these memories of, like, that gym being yeah. sold out yeah. for, like – and, like, the chanting and, yeah. it, like, not not – in a mean way, but just the energy yes, from yes. other people and my friends being there and how people would like do the themes. I'm sure they still do that now, do, but I yeah. just thought it was it was rowdy. so cool. And if so it was cool. a bad call, they used to do the nuts and bowl, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it, folks, 2003, 2004, girls basketball game, that gym would be packed to a brim. It would be, you'd have to have people standing behind the hoops. It was not the yeah. best thing to do because a lot of times, you know, there's, uh, you know, runway after a play where, you know, you got to hit the wall and whatnot. But this was a time, this was like, you know, the den on steroids. It was a remarkable time. And, you know, it's just, it it feels like it was yesterday when you, you, yeah. you see some of these pictures and whatnot. Um, you know, a couple last questions for you too. Um, in terms of Westwood High School uh, legacy, you know, what do you want your, your Westwood High School athletic legacy to be? Um. I think competing. I think you yeah. started this yeah. podcast off with it, but um, yeah. 
you know, it's not about the outcome. It's about how you compete. It's an, and I think my I would love my legacy to be what I appreciated so much about the people that came before me and how they like gave back and cared for their teammates. And I think so if you can compete and if you can play for your teammates and be there for them, like I think that's a wonderful leg legacy I would be proud to have. Certainly, I would check off all those boxes you know, oh, for you. Set me up there. <laughs> um, you know, you were an amazing competitor. You were someone that loved the game. You had your teammates' backs. Um, you were passionate about it, and you weren't afraid to show that, um, you know, and, and to show your love for the game, carrying a ball to school, you know, <laughs> bouncing it on the way. You know, no, no care in the world. Love that. Um, but ultimate compete, you know, earning every point. Um, setting the bar even higher, um, going back to back state championships. Well, guess what? There's a, there's a bar even higher, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to kids might not believe it, but they would look at you and then they believed it because you believed it. You know, um, I think that's something that I will always remember is this, this girl had something special. And, um, you know, when you think that you're tapped out with what you can do or, uh, you know, where you can go there's another ceiling you can crack through. And, you know, there's always ways to find yourself um, into that winning culture and to continue to develop that. So, you know, it's uh, an, an amazing example you set for a lot of generations, you know, our generation, but generations to come as well. That means, so, thank you, and that means so much, especially from a competitor I really admire and I've seen <laughs> play like so well in so many big games. So thank you for saying that. The last question, we'll make it a fun one. Basketball movies. There's, there's some good ones. I want, I want to know your opinion of best basketball movie, you know, entertainment wise. I also want to hear, know what's like maybe the worst, not worst, <laughs> or what's one that like you laugh at when people say it. You know, there's, there's a couple I have in mind. Oh my gosh, <laughs> um, I am a documentary person, so I will yes. say that first. Like, I really like the Michael Jordan to the max, the that Allen Iverson. Yeah. What was his, um, the answer, the Allen Iverson, the answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love and basketball was what came out at our time. And that classic. was like yeah. such a classic and like love story women, to yeah. neighbors. So that has to be my top. Yeah. Um, in terms of like funny ones, I saw this Disney one or started to watch like double. I, was King, I don't know what it was called. Double trouble or something like that. I was mentioned that with Charlotte before and and. There was a TikTok breakdown of that movie, and it was like the last minute or whatever where they win the game. And I'm pretty sure there was a double dribble. There was uh, there was double dribble. There was a travel, and uh, the clock, you know, definitely was expired long before that shot went up in the air. But it was so good. It was it was so bad. It was good. You know, just entertainment factor. But I was I was like, I wonder if she knows this movie because like literally had it on TikTok, and I was dying laughing because it was just like. It was, it was, you know. I tried to show perfect. it to my daughter to be like, this is like basketball when she was leaving a couple of years. She's only yeah. seven, but a couple of years younger. And then I started watching. I was like, you know what? Never mind. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not basketball. We were talking about, you know, Air Bud, you know, <gasps> Coach Carter. Coach Carter gets a lot of, uh, you I know, like I, I think it's a good one. But yeah. Love and Basketball, I think, was that was our generation where, like, um, it was you find, you know, these two people who are super competitive and then they're neighbors and, you know, they have the love story. It was on. It was off. And ultimately a great ending, you know, yeah. the, M the WNBA and whatnot. Coach but. Carter has that quote, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate, but that we're was, powerful beyond measure. I think that that is like an amazing quote. That so unlocked, look it up, everyone. <laughs> that unlocked like so many different um, just motivating factors for, and it was multi-sport, mm -hmm. yep. but it is. I think what yeah. that quote means is, you know, being honest with yourself about some of your weaknesses so you can work on them, yeah. you know, because if you're not honest with that, you're not going to be, it, there's no opportunity to uh, to work at that and, and become better. Yeah. But and great, get cool. in there and be in, imperfect. It's okay to yes. be in the darkness sometimes. Yeah. You know what? Go and the more times you do it, the better you're going to be, you know, and uh, it's what a what an amazing quote that is. That was yeah. back in the day when we had like AOL Instant Messenger and people would put that as like yep. their, their away message or like their their profile bio. You know, that was definitely one I had on there. Yes. But Lindsay, thank you so much for, for coming on. Um, you know, this was a conversation that we were very much, you know, looking forward to and, and really brings back a lot of great memories. And I think very beneficial too for a lot of these student athletes to just hear about what are some of the things that they can do to uh, work on their game, um, mental performance, uh, mental prep getting into a flow state yeah. um, but also kids you can go to harvard and play at the next level out of westwood high school you 100%. know she's shown that path and you know what harvard has sent 
players to the the WNBA as well. Kathy sent mm-hmm. five players to the WNBA. You yeah. know. And I will say, like, I don't know if this is appropriate to say, but I have coached at a prep school and I've been at Westwood my whole life. And I think like the like the community and the fans and the environment that you get when you play in front of your hometown and you play in front of your friends and their families and your parents, friends, it's just like it's unmatched anywhere else. And I think that that's like such a credit to being at Westwood and being in your hometown and making that magic happen there. I will add to that, too, as someone who hasn't played a competitive sport in quite a while. Um, <laughs> I'm so proud of when I see um, these kids go out there and, and wear that Westwood jersey as someone who's done it, but also someone who lives in this town, and to see how hard they work and to how they compete uh, together, the celebrations, how they handle themselves. I'm so proud, you know, to be from from Westwood, you know, and to see that too. So, um, yeah, it's I couldn't agree more. Yeah. But uh, go Westwood. Go Westwood. Yes. Go Westwood. <laughs> but Lindsay, th- hey, thank you so much for for coming on. And maybe I I, I always open up, uh, you know, the the opportunity. I mentioned to Kathy where play by play. If you ever want to do a little color commentary for a Westwood game, we'd always oh my love to have you. You know, I do some play by play, but it'd be good to hear, uh, you know, someone who understands what an actual pick and roll is. And uh, do you, you know. do it for the basketball too? Uh, this year. So I haven't done basketball yet, but we'll be doing uh, games games this year. Been doing everything. Field I would hockey. be such a rookie. You would have to really coach me up. Yeah. All, all you got to do is talk about, uh, you know, what, what's going on in the court. I'll, I'll just say, I'll paint the picture. I just need <laughs> someone that knows the sport, uh, you know, better than I. <laughs> well, that's, a, I mean, and that's currently a great staff. I mentioned Nikki Delaney yeah. and Coach Cliff is like an amazing person, yeah. coach, friend. Amazing. Um I love everything she's done with the program, yeah. and, and it's great to have Ruckus, Nikki Delaney back yes. on the staff. Yeah, and Coach Clifford, you know, came in after Riley, she had an undefeated TVL season. What a star. Unbelievable. And yeah. she's a star human. Like, she is. She yeah. is a star. Yeah. Comes from a great family. Her uh, father and my, my uncle were, were best of buds uh, in Norwood. They played hockey together and they played hockey together at Brown as well. So oh big gosh. athletic family. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Small world. Western Small world. world. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, folks, thank you so much for uh, for tuning in. Fantastic episode with, uh, with Lindsay Hallian and looking forward to seeing you all on the next one.